This video will discuss the need for research um, in wind tower construction in order to take advantage of the higher wind velocities that exist at heights that are much taller than what we're presently using wind towers for today. Um, to be able to go to these taller heights, we have to move away from using solely steel constructions to constructions that involve the use of precast segments at the lower part of wind towers and steel construction for the higher part of wind towers. Presently, there exists a lack of knowledge in terms of the behavior and how these precast segments um, slide one versus another and how they need to be post-tensioned together to enable the design and construction of these taller wind towers. Funding of this research will enable that work to be done. The collision of the rising worldwide demand for fossil fuels with their falling availability and their harmful effects on the environment has shifted the focus for obtaining energy through the use of renewable energy sources. Urbanization and rise of prosperity in many countries necessitates that a greater production of energy is obtained from renewable sources. An inexhaustible source of energy that is gaining widespread use is that from wind power. A 100 megawatt wind farm over the course of 20 years has the capacity to generate an amount of electricity that would replace the use of nearly 3 million tons of coal and over 60 billion cubic feet of natural gas. However, much more energy production from wind power is needed. An obstacle to this is the lack of reliable and strong winds at low altitudes. The variation of wind velocities with height follows a power law of behavior. Also, the force exerted on a wind turbine and its supporting structure is proportional to the cube of the wind velocity. Therefore, a doubling of the height of a wind tower would result in an increase in wind velocity by about 20% and power produced by approximately 75%. Thus, increasing the heights of wind towers and the sizes of wind turbines is clearly a part of the solution to the problem of producing more energy using renewable sources to satisfy the world's increasing needs. Currently, most wind turbines are supported on tubular steel towers. An increase in tower height may, however, lead to the requirement of additional stiffeners. In addition, with an increase in tower height and turbine size, the sections of steel towers become larger and thicker. Due to the existing restrictions on the maximum size of segments that can be transported to wind farms, it would require that these sections be divided into several segments, which in turn would necessitate their on-site fabrication and assembly. However, the fabrication of steel parts becomes costlier and more complex as the sections become larger and thicker. It has been calculated that doubling the tower height generally requires doubling the diameter as well. This results in an increase in the amount of material by a factor of eight, which removes the advantage of using steel over concrete in the construction of wind towers. On-site fabrication and assembly is, however, not a problem if precast concrete blocks are used because the design fabrication and erection community is well experienced in the construction of segmental precast concrete structures as can be seen in several bridge applications. The process for the segmental construction of wind towers is similar but has new additional challenges. Only one tower has been constructed using precast elements, the process which was as follows. The first step after design was to fabricate the precast elements in a yard. Next, they were shipped to site the elements that formed one ring were assembled and then post-tensioned horizontally so that they acted as a monolithic section. Several such rings of the tower were then stacked one above the other and made to behave in a monolithic manner by the vertical post-tensioned high-strength tendons to pre-compress the concrete so that it was nearly always in compression under the applied loads. Although the use of precast segmental concrete construction has the advantage of an easy fabrication and assembly of the concrete segments, the presence of interfaces between the concrete segments 
creates planes of weakness that must be carefully modeled and analyzed. Resistance to opening and sliding across these vertical and horizontal planes is provided by post-tensioning. The effect of horizontal and vertical post-tensioning in a wind tower is illustrated using wooden blocks and elastic bands. Two adjacent blocks are post-tensioned side by side by stretching an elastic band and then anchoring it in a stretched state around the blocks. The elastic band wants to return to its original unstretched length, but this is prevented by the rigidity of the blocks. The effect is a compressive stress across a surface connecting the blocks. This compressive stress increases the resistance to sliding between these blocks, the resistance now being several times larger than what it would be without the post-tensioning effect provided by the elastic bands. The larger the number of elastic bands, the greater the post-tensioning force and resistance to sliding. Another set of blocks, similarly post-tensioned using elastic bands, can then be lifted onto the first level, and then these two groups can be post-tensioned together vertically. Through such a process, post-tensioning systems can be used to join precast segments together in a cost-effective and relatively fast procedure. The challenge in design is in determining the optimal shape and size of the segments and the correct level of post-tensioning to be provided. In addition to the advantage of easy fabrication and assembly in the case of precast post-tensioned segmental concrete construction, it also has the following additional advantages. First of all, the stiffness of the concrete towers is typically higher than tubular steel towers. Secondly, a post-tensioned concrete tower has better fatigue properties in comparison to a steel tower. Thirdly, there are no issues related to local buckling in the concrete towers, which are inherently present in tubular steel towers. And finally, the material, fabrication, and erection cost for a taller concrete tower is less than that for a similar height steel tower. Thus, the construction of taller wind towers will invariably necessitate a shift in focus to the use of segmental, post-tensioned, precast concrete construction. The precast concrete segments could be used throughout a tower's height. However, for tall wind towers, the optimum design may be a combination of concrete segments at the lower portion of the tower with a tubular steel tower above it. This type of tower is referred to as a hybrid tower a concept that was utilized by advanced tower systems to design and construct the highest wind tower to date at a hub height of 133 meters. Now a wind turbine must never be located such that it is subject to excessively turbulent airflow. Light turbulence will decrease performance since a turbine cannot react to rapid changes in wind direction while heavy turbulence may reduce expected equipment life or may even result in wind turbine failure. Natural fluid flows, they are governed by a phenomena called turbulence and turbulence means rapidly fluctuating uh, pressure fields and velocity fields. So turbulence is a rule, uh, not an exception in natural flows and therefore if you want to extract useful mechanical energy out of wind flow, which is the objective of uh, wind energy, uh, wind engineering, uh, we need to model it. What it does is that when wind go, uh, goes around the tubular structures, the towers, the wind towers, it gives rise to vortex shedding. And vortices induce lateral forces uh, that cause lateral vibrations in the structure and these vibrations are normal to the direction of flow. So in order to model uh, this phenomena, how the energy is transferred into the structure and what are the structural modes, dominant structural modes in which the structure is going to vibrate, we have to model the whole couple uh, wind structure uh, phenomena. The objective of numerical modeling is to be able to extract, to figure out how much useful mechanical energy can be taken out of the wind. That is the primary objective. Uh, at the same time, uh, wind flow is going to induce vibrations in the system and this vibration is going to cause fatigue, especially if these are concrete tubular towers then fatigue lowering or 3D effects at the intersection or the joints where the concrete uh, sections are coming together can lead to spalling of concrete, failure of the joint. Another aspect of modeling in this context is to find the ideal location of the individual wind towers. 
because let us say that the wind that is coming onto the structure assume for a second that it is laminar and therefore we can model it and we can extract some energy but as soon as the wind goes through the rotating blades the wind towers that are on the leeward side which is downstream side the flow onto those towers is going to be all turbulent and therefore there is a pattern so that we need minimum distance between the different towers in order for the flow to become streamlined again and therefore that we can extract the energy converted into mechanical energy. These wind towers, either the all concrete towers or the hybrid towers, have a very large number of interfaces, mainly concrete to concrete. Although some experimental research has been conducted in order to better understand the behavior of interfaces in precast segment to segment construction, most of that has been to the bridge community. The geometry and the demands that we are looking at in the design of tall wind towers are very different, and so they require um, new dedicated research programs. Therefore, there is a great need to conduct experimental tests on such joints subjected to fatigue loading in order to assess their capacities and estimate their behavior. There are many factors which control the interface um, slip resistance and behavior of precast segments that are adjacent to each other. Um, one of these factors is whether or not the precast faces are smooth or if there's some type of a locking shear key. Um, not only whether or not there is a shear key, but there can be many different types and numbers of shear keys used on any particular connection. Also important to consider is what is the level of pre-stressing that is applied across the joint as well as what the opening stiffness of that joint is as controlled by the amount of pre-stressing that actually crosses it. Um, and another factor to consider is whether or not there is any reinforcement, any dowel or linkage bars that connect precast segment to precast segment. So in this program, we anticipate and plan to do a range of experiments that look at the influence of all these factors on shear slip resistance of precast segmental concrete to concrete interfaces. The Structural Engineering Laboratory at the University of Illinois is well equipped to conduct the type of testing necessary to subject full-scale concrete to concrete joints to the pattern of displacements and forces that are needed to fully characterize their behavior. This laboratory has more than 100 loading devices that include hydraulic actuators, uniaxial and biaxial testing frames, and loading devices that can subject a structural component such as a precast segment from a wind tower to all three possible displacements and rotations. The laboratory also has more than 1,000 sensors for measuring displacements and a similar number of channels for recording these measurements. Here at uh, University of Illinois, Department of Civil Engineering, we are developing residual base turbulence models uh, for large eddy simulation. These are some new techniques that uh, are being developed here and they have been very successfully applied onto flows around aircrafts. Uh, we think that we have uh, ex uh, uh, the best uh, computers at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications and especially with the Blue Waters project that is the fastest and the largest computer here in the USA, we will have tremendous opportunity to analyze and tackle this problem. We propose a holistic and integrated approach towards our research program that combines looking at both numerical modeling and experimental techniques. It provides a simulation-based capability where we can fully understand and uh, model and investigate the phenomena of wind-induced vibrations into the systems, find the loads at the concrete, uh, concrete sections, which are going to be very critical, find the dominant buckling modes, and then this is uh, backed by and is fully integrated with a very sophisticated experimental setup that we have here in the department at the University of Illinois. Our experimental program is going to investigate that in more detail to find parameters and also develop guidelines that can be used by people in practice, people who are uh, interested in designing uh, wind towers, uh, fabricators, and other uh, entities that are involved in the CN making process for wind engineering.